everyone today I'm going to share with you a product from Amazon that I have owned for a long long time what I'm talking about is this at home electrolysis hair removal kit this one I purchased from Amazon in 2010 that time I purchased it for $30 currently it is available for $37 and some change and it has really really bad reviews on Amazon but I think it is actually a great product if you have some sparse coarse hair on your chin region that's what i use it for so i'm going to show you guys some demo and i'm going to respond to some of the issues that have been raised in the negative comments on amazon and how those could be taken care of and what i think the users were doing wrong when they gave that negative review to this product i honestly think that this is a great product to have if you are of a colored or darker skin tone like me so let's get into it let me first show you how i use this kit this is what the actual box looks like when you open it up you have your actual electrolysis pen there is one probe or needle that's already inside and then it comes with a spare it comes with a little tweezer that i have already lost because of course i've owned this thing since 2010 and that tweezer in my opinion is a completely useless thing <laughs> so you are better off using your own pair of tweezers on this side you have a little dial which lets you select the level of electrolysis current that you want flowing through your skin it goes all the way from 0 to 10 i personally don't think that that dial does much i usually leave it around 7 and that's what i need for removing hair on my chin region and i only use it on my chin region on the back side there is a little compartment that's where a 9 volt battery goes in the device does not come with the battery so you will need to purchase it separately this little thing is not the easiest thing to open. I usually have to use my tweezers to kind of get in there and open this thing. So when I'm using the device, I just leave this door open, connect my battery to the back side and just leave the whole device down and just go about using the pen on my chin. Now, besides purchasing the kit from Amazon, you will of course need a good pair of tweezers a 9 volt battery i would recommend having a clean paper towel around because you are going to need a bowl of water with some salt in it in this quarter cup of water you can say i have added almost a teaspoon of salt because you need your water to be pretty saturated with salt it needs to be pretty salty for this device to work that's how it conducts electricity and then for post care i would recommend having like an ice pack and some antiseptic cream like a standard just you know neosporin cream or something that you use for cuts and scrapes and one thing i would definitely say that you do need some practice with this device to use it correctly so let's get into how I use this device you are going to need to dissolve the salt completely after you connect the battery I usually leave it hanging like so and you need to turn the dial to whatever setting you need and then there is a little switch that can kind of retract or push up the probe not the needle is super tiny I don't know if the camera is capturing it so you need to push the tab up to make the probe to stick out from top of course my device is super old so <laughs> some of the things are not that perfectly functional but anyways once you have it up you're gonna wet your fingers in the salt water and hold it on this metal part if someone else is doing this for you you will wet your fingers with salt water and there's a little pad on top you're supposed to touch your fingers to that so the electricity flows through you however i have never you know had anybody do this thing for me and then you'll hear this sound when you actually touch the salt water to the probe and then touch the probe to your skin and that's a single beep uh, i think in their recommendations they only recommend that you do each hair follicle for two beeps or something like that for me personally i have seen that it takes me a lot longer and you are going to need a mirror the higher the magnification the better mine is just from daiso it has i think 
need 2x or so magnification on one side and a single whatever magnification on the other. Most of my hair growth is on my chin or around the chin area. I have some mustache, but I don't use this device on it. I have tried it, but I feel like the pores or the follicle entrance around anywhere else on my face is much smaller than what's on my chin and it is really painful i cannot take it so i don't use it but you know i always use it on my chin let's get started uh -huh. i have one hair right here Gross alert if things gross you out just look away but you see the little thing oozing out here that is actually an indicator that the process is working and the stuff is coming out because the electric current is killing the hair follicle and then the idea is that when you try to pull with your tweezers the hair is just supposed to come out this one didn't so I need to redo this wet my fingers again and go back at it again and notice that I'm moving my probe in and out and that is because I don't know the depth of the hair follicle and this way I can kind of ensure that I'm reaching the actual hair follicle. So yeah, as you saw, this kind of just came out much easier and this is kind of the, I want to show you the root on that one. So I don't know if you can tell, like the root, it looks a little bit lame, whereas a portion of the follicle is still intact, like right there, whereas the very root looks a, quite a bit lame. So that's the idea of it. And I usually like to kind of smooth out the area a bit to remove if there is any residual portion of the follicle still inside my skin. Not coming up easily between the top down. Still not ready. Can you hear the frequency differences when the probe is in contact with my skin versus when it is not? I hope you can still hear that. There you go. That came out easy again. So I have quite a few hair left to do. Some hair just are more stubborn than the others. Some hair ha are growing at a different angle. So the hair follicle is at a different angle. So, so you need to kind of estimate where the hair follicle is. This wasn't that easy to remove as the previous two. And then I'm gonna kind of press to remove any dead hair follicle pieces or anything from inside. You can get a little bit of bruising where the probe entered your skin and where the electricity has been passing kind of in your skin. So apply some Neosporin and some ice on that area if you need to. So let me finish doing the rest of my hair and I, I will come back and we'll talk more. All right, so I'm done and I have decided that I'm gonna stop here. This is what my chin area looks like. Of course, I did not hit a lot of the hair that I had but I did hit quite a few especially the ones that were coarser and thicker and more obvious on my chin the ones that I'm left with are definitely not as thick and as obvious I'm gonna give my skins a few days to heal and then I'm gonna come back and then I'll hit the ones that I didn't before uh, I tried to remove a really light colored one here but I don't think I was able to actually get to the root because I couldn't really see it that well and I tried to remove one mustache hair and you can see how much redness it causes me. It pulled out smoothly with the root and everything but you know I don't think it's worth the pain and the redness 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, but I just want to do one to show it on camera. Notice the bumps on my chin. Don't worry, they are going to calm down in an hour or so. So in general, you saw that I was able to remove quite a bit of the coarse hair from my skin. When I tried to remove the teeny tiny hair from my upper lip area, I feel like it's more pain than gain for me personally. I usually bleach the hair on my face. I don't necessarily pluck or shave them. And this is just a little bit of whatever growth that's remaining after I have bleached the hair that would get bleached and I don't really mind them. I just leave them as is, you know, if ever in future I feel like they are getting beyond control, I would definitely remove them. For the coarser hair, I do need to be persistent and that is, I think, where a lot of people who are giving negative reviews to this product are making a mistake. They are expecting that they would just insert the needle do it of one time and the hair would just stop growing back after that. If you feel even a slight tug on the hair when you're pulling it out, know that the hair might grow back because what you're trying to do is pass electricity through that hair follicle so that it gets damaged and it does not grow any more hair. Our body is pretty resilient. So if you only partially damage that hair follicle, it's going to repair itself and it's going to start growing the hair back. So if you see a regrowth, you might have to redo this process. As I told you, I have owned this device for a long time. Why I know this device works is I had a giant mole, a big hairy black mole that was growing multiple hair out of it at the same time. Mole, 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 mole. So when I purchased this device and I actually treated the hair there, not just that the hair stopped growing. The only hair that's now growing up there is like a really, really fine one. I tried to treat it today, but as you can see, I didn't really get it because I couldn't really even see where it's growing out of. But it actually killed all the hair that were growing out of there, any of the coarse hair. And it actually went down in color too. So that told me that this device really, truly works if used correctly. But as you saw, you need to kind of use it Try to pull that hair out. If it doesn't work, you'll need to go back in, treat it again, see if it works. If not, go back in and you'll need to do it multiple times till the hair just kind of slides out as if it was embedded in a uh, bowl of jello. The next thing that I saw against this device is that it is kind of not that well built and I agree with it. It is not. It's made out of cheap plastic. It is not like the most nice looking device. So if I were to take off a star for that, I definitely would. Other point I saw raised multiple times was that the needles came bent and that was true with me as well. As you can see, my needles are still bent. If I want, I can kind of use my nails and straighten them out, but I have seen that they are so fine that they just tend to get bent again as I'm using them. And sometimes if I'm not precisely at my hair follicle, the needle is so thin that it's supposed to just slide in, but it can actually slightly break my skin and in the process get bent a little bit. It hasn't bothered me. I have seen that as long as I keep on adjusting the angle of my pen so that the needle is perpendicular to my skin, I'm good to go. And at the same time, it is very important to keep in mind that all our hair are not going straight out of our skin either. You know, they are always growing at some angle. So I need to go in at an angle anyways. I have gotten electrolysis done professionally, almost five visits and they costed $45 each. And I honestly didn't see any improvement even after those five visits. This device costs $37, which is less than the cost of one visit. And it has done me good. Another point I saw was that you need to have the precision of a brain surgeon I feel that as long as you have a mirror with a good magnification good lighting and a lighting from a good angle I feel like you will not have as much trouble as they are mentioning so definitely get a good magnification mirror and set it up in a way that it comes where you can see your hair 
where you can get the light and at the same time you know insert the needle inside also keep an eye on the charge that you have in your battery if your battery is running low you're not going to see results those are my thoughts let me know what you guys think if you are an esthetician who does this treatment if you have thoughts on why it didn't work for me when i got it done professionally please let me know also in the comments below if you are someone who has been thinking about the device and if you read the reviews online and you are scared then i hope this video helped you in easing some of those doubts and gave you some pointers on how to use the device correctly so that this really cheap device can work for you all right thank you again for watching if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye